I think you bring up a really good point about crying. I mean, it felt like you're like describing my recent experience almost to a T, but there's something about like with live birth, you know, your presence is helping them to be strong in one way or helping them to be confident in one way. And with a stillbirth or a miscarriage, it's like you still have to provide that without the happy outcome. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's something to be said for crying in private because it's like when they look at you, like it's a situation where you don't know the answer, <laughs> even as a midwife. Right. Like you right. don't have it and you right. still have to be like, I'm, like, I don't know the answer and I'm still here for you. I don't know the answer and you're still going to be okay. Right. Like right. I don't know the answer right. and like we're still in this together. And that's very different than like, okay, there's going to be a baby coming out that you're going to get to hold that's going to be alive and things will go from there. So it's like this unknown factor that comes in. I think, yeah, like it's tempting to show, like you want to show empathy still, but having your moment of like, I don't know, this is how it has to be somewhere else because like you're like their landline in that moment, like they're buoy. <laughs> you can show them how to be in the unknown. Yeah. Because we're never guaranteed in birth. That's right. mm -hmm. That's right. It's always a question until the baby is out mm -hmm. and is breathing. It's Ain't always a question. So we ought not be cavalier about that. Mm -hmm. It's a question. It's it's a reminder to us that no, not one second is guaranteed us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and so we 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 just with them. You know, beyond the worlds, we're we're with them between the worlds in that mm -hmm. moment in in really intense yeah, way. Um, but that but we get fooled into thinking that, that we're not between the worlds all every time we're out of birth. It's always that. When it comes to hospital induction, um, like obviously the risk to the baby has been dissolved for the hosp from the hospital's perspective, as far as like they're not in risk management zone as much anymore um but could you, you mean with the, with the, with the, yeah with a stillbirth yeah, yeah so if they know that the baby has passed they're not like you said they're not as like fussy mm -hmm. um but are there like what are the risks of inducing a stillbirth for the mom and i ask that because mm -hmm. especially question. with there being it seems like placenta issues are often the complications that come up for late term um deaths but i'm wondering like with my client, like her placenta had a really hard time releasing and she ended up with a DNC, I think in part because she was induced and her body wasn't totally like recognizing that this was the end of the yeah. process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so even though her baby did come out eventually, like it took a long time and she ended up bleeding a little bit and like there was issues with the placenta. So I was just wondering if you could, with, the, with, with not letting the stillbirth unfold in its own time, like what are the risks of interfering with that? Like we know that the baby has passed, but what are the risks to the mom in inducing in inducing, in inducing a stillbirth? I mean, I think there's the similar risks of regular mm -hmm. induction, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of any all the risks associated, like say if they get an epidural, all mm -hmm. the risks associated mm -hmm. with um, a fetal distress with overdoing the pitocin. I mean, not fetal distress, but like taxing the uterus. Taxing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I guess I just ask because like when you go into the hospital and tap out risk, they usually do focus on the risk to the baby. Right. Um, and then when this is the situation, the family's perspective is like, okay, how do we do this in a way that's also best to protect mom from risk? Even though that's always a question, it's like from the hospital perspective, mm -hmm. that becomes the only. It's just a, it's just a different dynamic, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the. Unfortunately, liability always has to be hanging in the air, and a good midwife has to make sure she keeps her license and all of this oh, important stuff. Yeah. Fine. So it's like, what are the what are the lines in the sand around the mom insisting that what you're saying in your experience, your moms would want to go to the hospital. So of course you go to the hospital because that's what the mom wanted. But say the mom wanted, say that the same client wanted to stay home and pass her baby at home. What would be the politics around that? What would be Healthy, not healthy about that. Okay, so in that particular situation with my client, we did not know the little one had passed. Uh -huh. So we were going to the hospital to see what was going on. There was bleeding and there was contracting, there were threats of preterm labor. I, I had a very good suspicion it was placental eruption. I just knew. Mm -hmm. I don't ask me how, but I just felt like this looks like placental eruption to me. And I knew that the baby was at risk. 
And I do regret a little bit when we were at her house and I picked her up. I said, you know, you're going to be fine and your baby's going to be fine. And I don't know why I said that because I didn't know. Maybe because I wanted that. I wanted to put that to the owners that that would be the case. But I think somewhere really in the back of my mind, I was like, that may not be 100% true. But I didn't want to acknowledge that at the time. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, so that, that I had to transport. That was an antepartum transport that I, that I was obligated to get her to the hospital to assess and see what was going on. Now, gotcha. a different situation is if a mama, say, um, goes to the hospital, gets a confirmed diagnosis of either miscarriage or stillbirth, um, and there is no, say, excessive oh, bleeding, or there's no concerns right. about bleeding yet, but we right. know the pregnancy has passed. Right. Um, there is the question of, so when did it pass? How much time does the body have to release? Mm -hmm. And if so if, it was, if it's within safe guidelines and she doesn't want to induce to the hospital and wants to wait for the pregnancy or the little one to pass on its own, then that's a conversation she needed to have in terms of um, what would that really mean, mm -hmm. right? Um, I know that there are midwives in the Bay Area that definitely assist with uh, births at home, stillbirths at home. Mm -hmm. um, our law is so funny, you know, we, um, we are the only healthcare provider that has our protocols legislated. Exactly. You know, doctors don't have their protocols legislated, acupuncturists don't, other people that are, um, you know, supervised or seen by the medical board in California don't have their work legislated, and we do, and it's pretty freaking ridiculous, because that should not yeah, be the case. Yeah, tell you exactly what you can do and what you can't well, do. Well, not exactly, but, it, it, there, you know, there are regs, and even, even the whole, you know, singletons and cephalic and between 37 and 42, that in and of itself is regulating the care that we give, and that's inappropriate, I think. Mm -hmm. I say that on the record. Um, so, but in terms of um, attending at home, there are things for the midwife to be aware of, and there are risks to be associated with that that the midwife and the mama have to be aware of. Sure. That there are risks of um, it not going, you know, in a normal course. The risks of excessive bleeding potentially. The risks of you know be, it being an incomplete process. Um, and then there's a little more work for the midwife and the mama. When, it, when, when, it, when, a, when a known stillbirth happens at home, there are, there are certain protocols to follow in terms of, I, I don't think, like, a, I think a coroner's office has to be called to come in to confirm the birth, and you have to have a friendly coroner who will do that, that will not take the baby away necessarily, if the parents mm. don't want the baby to be taken away and want to stay with the little one. Because I think that, I think if I understand, if I'm remembering correctly, midwives cannot be the ones who confirm the it's death. It has to be somebody else that confirms the death. So then there's a little bit more paperwork to kind of go through and a little bit, a little more finagling in terms of making sure that the outside person is okay with the fact that this happened in the non-hospital setting Got and it. being able to confirm that. And then again, respecting the parents' wishes in terms of what needs to happen with the little one's body. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's all of those things to think about. What does the family want? What are they willing to do and not do? Because um, it's, it's a little bit Would more Would they of a take the baby, have an autopsy, that mm -hmm. kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. They could. They could. If, and the parents might want that. But they might want to have the experience at a hospital and then be okay with that. And then mm -hmm. all that. I was so, surprised at how much Alt Debates gave my client. I mean, they encouraged her to do what she was doing at the hospital, but they were like, you can go home. And the, the question of going home was that they didn't know when the baby had passed and they didn't know how many days it would take. And those two factors combined, I think, were the combined to be like, oh, is there risk of like infection or something? Because we don't know how long this has been going on and we don't know how long it will take. But I was surprised. But then it was just based on lack of fetal movement. It was based, well, then they did ultrasound when they got, but no, yeah, she I'm had no why, other symptoms. Right, yeah, she, she had no bleeding. She, had she, had, she wasn't having contractions. Um, it was just the loss of fetal movement. So, yeah, I think maybe, yeah, I guess if she had been bleeding or something, they would have been pushier. But they were, like, surprisingly, like, this is totally up to you. And I think she took, like, we took, like, two or three hours to decide what she wanted to do. So Again, because I think there's no other signs of potential yeah. issue because of now bleeding yeah. and cramping. It was probably fine. Um, for the sake of midwives, though, she did say after the experience, she had a few interventions, but she was like, this all, she's like, even though the hospital staff were very nice, she's like, this all confirmed that, like, I want to have a home birth 
for my next live CV. So that was that was good to hear as a silver lining. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. I had um, I have a family member who uh, lost the baby. I was not I was not there for the birth. I, I don't I didn't even know she was pregnant. Um, but then. That was when I was going to visit Ghana, and then right when I went, I went to visit. I went to live with her, and she told me, "Oh, I just lost my baby not so long ago. It was like a miscarriage or something of that sort." And she ended up going to the hospital and you know having it like um, taken out, or she she said like vacuumed out the way she described it, and she said for her it was. She wasn't sure what was happening because she just went to use the restroom and then she realized she's been sitting there for about 10 minutes bleeding and she can't get up because she feels like it's like a faucet turned on down there and it's just pouring out blood. And then somehow she managed to get herself to the hospital and that happened and all that. But then while I was there, because she said it was about a couple of weeks or so, about a month before I came, and while I was there, it kind of happened again. And she ended up having to go to the hospital again. Mm -hmm. And I mean, from what she told me, it seemed like they didn't really give her a very certain answer as to what was happening. She said, uh, well, they, they think it might have been that there were still some parts left in there. Mm -hmm. um, they think, they're not sure. Or maybe it was a twin or something, they're not sure. Mm -hmm. And so they just did it again, mm -hmm. which was like, Problem. yeah, it was, and, and, and she's a great person because she she puts herself into her work and she just kind of does not even think about or doesn't show that she's thinking about what's happening in in the moment so I never knew how she like felt emotionally about it I never saw any of the you know kind of sitting back and thinking about it. I never saw any of that but then I wanted to know kind of in s those situations what are like typically how does it like affect the mother emotionally because I didn't feel like it was my place yet to go to her even though like we're family and say hey let's talk about this emotionally because I wanted her to take her time mm -hmm. and do it on her own mm -hmm. but I wanted to know how does that usually affect the mother mm -hmm. you know emotionally physically and all that mm -hmm. well emotionally I think it really varies from person to person because there can be mamas that have a very hard time because they um they have a very close relationship with this pregnancy and this growing little one inside them and they feel very connected and they could have been very eager to be, you know, be mm -hmm. pregnant and so the loss can hit them very hard and mm -hmm. the loss can feel fairly devastating. Um, and there are other mamas that might be more ambivalent about their pregnancies and might be relieved that it happened if they weren't eager to be pregnant maybe in the first place or it was a surprise pregnancy. So I think the range of emotions really, really varies and so I think it's always useful to ask open-ended questions in that case, just to be like, just ask, you know, how has this affected you? Um, is there anything that you want to talk about, about how it was to be pregnant and then lose the pregnancy? Um, and especially if you had to go and have some kind of hospital intervention, um, it's a whole other set of things in terms of feeling like, okay, and the hard piece is that a lot of times we don't know. You know, we don't know much, which I think is important. I in that I there's um, stop the mystery of conception, implantation, pregnancy beginning, stop. pregnancy continuing, pregnancy ending. There's so much mystery stop. around that. And I, I was just interviewing with a potential midwifery client and talking about this, that I think that that's something that I really... What I love about midwifery work is that there's so much mystery and I really honor that and I don't think we are gonna know and I don't think we necessarily should know. We don't know why sometimes little ones are conceived and why they're not. There are women that try to get pregnant for years and years and years and they never get pregnant. And we don't know why. I mean, we have guesses. We have guesses why, but... And then what I see a lot, very regularly, is women who have been deemed infertile and then try to get pregnant and then they don't and then they give up or they start the adoption process or they start the foster care process as soon as they give up the idea of being pregnant they get pregnant there's something about letting go of that wanting or that whatever it is like i'm not it's not gonna happen and then the spirit says all right you're done i'm here you know so um hi. 
So, um, if you can give us 15 more minutes, that would be great. If that's possible, so we can wrap up. Sure, sure. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that brings up something, well, we've talked about, well, some sours introduced the idea of, like, how... Can I, can I interrupt and oh, just yeah, finish yeah. talking about the oh, physical sure, piece? Yeah. Um, and so, in terms of, um, physically, the, the, in terms of, say, either, um, a loss that happens at home, um, or a loss, the, a suspected loss that happens at home, and then you follow up and you find out you're not pregnant, and then you have a therapeutic abortion in a hospital or clinic setting, generally what you will see, I do recommend that the mama takes one or two days of bed rest after that. Um, because the uterus has been through a lot, and her head has been through a lot, whether or not she feels like that, I think it is a big deal on some level, and so, that time down, that down, if, if she can, now what we know is that a lot of mamas are already mamas and they mm -hmm. have little ones to take care of or family members to take care of and that's very hard to do. So lots of blessings to the mamas that can take that time and, and a privilege enough space to be able to be in bed and take care of Why? themselves because not every mama can do that but I think that that is recommended Why? so that the bleeding can stop sooner than later. What you'll mm -hmm. see is if mamas have a miscarriage on their own yeah. or um, have a abortion Quiet. following up with a loss, following, followed by a loss, following a loss, um, and they don't get that time to rest, they will bleed a little bit longer. So they'll have some um, like light period or spotting for potentially up to you know 10 to 14 days afterwards, which is a pretty long time. Now that's a mom who's pretty active and ignoring and da 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 da. da. But again, the bed rest. The nourishing, the sleeping well, hopefully eating well, being well nourished, hydrated, all that will stop the bleeding sooner than later. But it's not unusual to. So pretty to much the same is she's a postpartum mom. Kind of. And it's pretty much the same kind of, uh, maybe a little less intense, yeah. but she still has yeah. a body that needs to heal and her, yeah. her womb mm -hmm. that needs to close. Yeah. I'm gonna stop questions now because we are past time. Um, but I just want you to say some words around just. A little bit more about that, like, what would your advice be to doulas supporting clients through uh, through the loss of a child, miscarriage, or stillbirth, and postpartum period? I think with um, miscarriage, I would say that it's important to find out the mother's relationship to her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Like, we cannot assume that this is a devastating loss to her. It may not be. We cannot assume anything about the beginnings of the pregnancy, the intentions of the pregnancy, the, the relationship to her pregnancy, really. So asking open-ended questions, I think that's the most, the biggest gift you can give is like, okay, so, uh, I think, I think, well, what do I want to say about that? Many times doulas don't come into contact with mamas till after they are at risk for miscarriage. You know, mm -hmm. we see our mamas 20 weeks or more, so that's, that's a different thing. But if you are lucky enough to have a mama that knows exactly when she got pregnant and wants a doula right away, wants mm -hmm. to care right away, um, just asking that question. You know, so, okay, either, you know, you're at risk for a loss, you're having symptoms. I would encourage you to make sure that they get followed up, you know, follow up care right away, um, just to make sure. And if they have had a loss, just like, I, I want to know what that's been like for you. Anything that you would, are you open or willing to share with me about what that experience was like for you? I, I want to hear, I want to listen. And what's probably true is that no one's asking her that question. Right. You know, her partner isn't necessarily, your health care providers and in, in, in the medical model of care are not asking that question. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Um, and Thank you. So, yeah, that's really important. And then in terms of the after 20 weeks with a potential stillbirth, um, again, asking if you're going to be there when the process happens, um, asking about... Um, if, she, if she has a sense about how she wants that to be. You know, it's, it's, again, women are being asked this question. Mm -hmm. Do you want... Is it, is it confirmed in a hospital? If, if it's confirmed in a hospital, chances are very good she's going to stay in the hospital. It's, mm -hmm. it's unlikely that she will know she has the option because the hospital never treats it like an option to leave or you know, have a term to pass at home. Mm -hmm. But um, that's something you can offer to let her know. Is that something you want to explore to, mm -hmm. to not stay and go home? But then if she's staying, again, making sure she knows she has the option to hold her little one, to have pictures with her little one, and what she wants to do about her breast milk. 
because people don't necessarily, again, people always assume. Uh, there's a lot of assumptions I think that are made, like you just want to forget it. You don't want to, you don't want to draw it out. And if you think about the breast milk production, it's kind of drawing it out. Right. But some mamas want to know. I was floored that my mom, she knew right away, I, I want to donate my breast milk, you know. And, nice. and she did everything. She pumped, she expressed, she made sure she, she kept up her breast milk production for a while so she could donate that milk that she had. Um, and, and the last thing I'll say too is like make sure that you are taking care of yourself too, you know, that that you give space for you around maybe you really like this client, we're really looking forward to working with her and being a part of her care and a, a part of her team and then that's, that's that, that long-term relationship in terms of that pregnancy is ended and that's a loss for you. Um, so whatever that means, you know, that's what's nice about having like a doula circle is checking in with your other doula sisters and say, can you just listen to me for a little bit of time to talk about what this thing happened and it wasn't what I thought was going to happen. Um, maybe the mama's angry. Maybe the mama doesn't want to have contact with you. It's all good. You know, mama's going to have a range of experiences around this. Um, mama's, it's not unusual. Mama's going to be angry at the world and they shut everybody else out because this was not what they wanted. Maybe they worked really hard to get pregnancy and this loss is pretty devastating. So, and to be, Remember not to take anything personally. If a mama stops contact with you, leave her a message and say, I haven't heard from you, it's okay, you don't have to have contact with me, I just want you to know I'm available if and when you're ready and I'm thinking of you, just so they know that. Mm -hmm. And no pressure for them to have any contact with you. And, and again, self-care, it's all about the self-care, looking at whatever it is that may come up for you around it. I think that's really important too, to honor. And Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah.